Let's now do an example where we calculate the molecular partition functions. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate it for a CO2 molecule. And we're going to calculate basically the three molecular partition functions at 300 Kelvin. We're going to assume our CO molecule is in a box of one liter. We're going to say that its moment of inertia is 1.45 times 10 to the minus 46 kilogram meter squared. And the fundamental frequency of vibration for the CO molecule is 6.4 times 10 to the 13 inverse seconds. So the first one that we're going to start with is translation. And that means then Q trans is going to be equal to 2 pi times m times kBT raised to the power of 3 over 2 times the volume divided by Planck's constant cubed. We substitute in all the numbers. We have 2 pi. In this case, the mass of carbon monoxide. Well, if we go to our periodic table, carbon has a mass of 0 or 12.1 or 0.107 AMUs. Oxygen has a mass of 15.999 AMUs. And then each AMU is 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So there's the mass of carbon monoxide. We're going to multiply that by Planck's, or sorry, by the Boltzmann constant, 1.381 times 10 to the minus 23. We're going to multiply that by the temperature, 300 Kelvin. All of this is raised to the power of three halves. Multiply that by the volume, which is equal to one, and we'll divide this by Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34, raised to the power of three. What we get is a numerator of 4.21 times 10 to the minus 68 divided by 2.91 times 10 to the minus 100. And doing this division, what we get is 1.447 times 10 to the 32. And so what we can see is that this is a very large number. And so what this large number means is that there are are the energy levels or the spacing between energy levels is going to be very small. And basically that just means that there's very little energy difference between these energy levels. Um, and hence that's why that there are so many that are thermally accessible. Let's now move on and calculate the rotational partition function. So that means Q rot, that's going to be equal to 8 pi squared times the moment of inertia I times Boltzmann's constant times the temperature. That's divided by sigma times Planck's constant squared. When I substitute in numbers, what we'll get is 8 pi squared times the moment of inertia, which was given in the problem, 1.45 times 10 to the minus 46, times 1.31 or 381 times 10 to the minus 23, times 300, divided by 1 times 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 squared. And in this case, I substituted in 1 for the symmetry factor sigma because CO, just like HF, has only one um, identical or rotation where if we were to spin this thing completely around 360 degrees, we would get the exact same thing back. And so that's why my sigma in this case is equal to 1. When we evaluate these numbers, the final number that we get for Q rotation is 108. And so what this says is that there's 108 accessible energy levels for the system at 300 Kelvin. The final one is vibrational. And so in this case, my Q vibrational, that's equal to 1 over 1 minus E to the negative H nu over KB T. And so as an aside, let's just calculate the minus h nu over kb times t. In this case, we've got negative 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. That's going to be times 6.4 times 10 to the 13, which was a number given in the problem, being the fundamental frequency for the CO bond. 
Boltzmann's constant, 1.381 times 10 to the minus 23, and that's going to be multiplied by 300. And so then this number is going to be equal to negative 10.24. What that means when I substitute that in is I'm going to get 1 over 1 minus e to the negative 10.24. And so basically, this number, this e to the negative 10.24, is going to be very, very, very small. And so in effect, what I'm going to get is 1 over 1. And so my answer is effectively equal to 1, which again isn't something that's um, surprising. It's very well known that vibrational um, partition functions are very small, and that in this case around room temperature, only the ground state is accessible. So just as a point of comparison, Let's just redo this calculation at 3,000 Kelvin. So we've got our partition function for vibrational modes, for the one vibrational mode here, 1 over 1 minus e to the negative h nu over kBT. Again, we're going to calculate this h nu over kBT as a separate thing, just as an aside, minus 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34, that's times 6.4 times 10 to the 13, divided by 1.381 times 10 to the minus 23. In this case now I'm just going to substitute in 3,000. And what that does is just move this decimal place over one, so it's now negative 1.024 is what this factor is. And so if I were to substitute that in now, 1 minus e to the negative 1.024, well this exponential is now a number that's comparable to 1, which means that my qviv now is going to be equal to 1.56. And so what this says now is that more than the ground state is actually accessible. But you can see that this number is still um, very, very small compared to the rotational and the translational. And so you can see how little of an effect the vibrational modes have on the partition function being how few vibrational states are accessible even at these highly elevated temperatures. Where at 3000 Kelvin we would expect that the CO molecule to probably have decomposed before it actually has any significant contributions from vibrational um, excitations.